Welcome to Lugana Pico Sunarin Online Church on Pentecost Sunday, 31st of May 2020. Especially today, I warmly welcome all of my church families to this service. Today, you may wonder why there are lots of red in the church. Even I'm wearing this stole or scarf. And for your information, red is the color for Pentecost. And it represents God's love, fire, and the Holy Spirit. White is for Christmas and Easter. Purple for Advent, the season of waiting for the Lord, the coming of the Lord, and before Christmas. And Lent, the season of reflection and preparation before the celebration of Easter. Then green is another color for ordinary Sundays. By the way, my name is Ilum Kim, if you don't know me, and I'm the minister of LPUC. Today's online church, Jane and Natalie, are going to demonstrate the mass church craft that you can do at home. And later, Beryl is going to pray. Now let us share a sign of peace one another, not by shaking hands, but maybe by putting your hands on your chest then reach your hand out to others. Today you will hear of the words of peace in different languages. May the peace of the, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Jesus Christus menyertai kamu. Salam Sayyidna Yesus Al-Masih yakun ma'a jami'akum. 우리 주님 예수 그리스도의 평강이 여러분과 함께 하시길 바랍니다. 왔다시다치노 카미 슈 예수 그리스도요. 아나타토 토모니 헤이와데 아리마스요니. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today I have several announcements. Firstly, there was a virtual morning tea last Sunday, as you see um, a photo on the screen. Thank you all for your participation. As you agreed last Sunday, we are having another one today around 11.15 a.m., quarter past 11 after online church. Once again, please mute your audio when you sign into our Zoom meeting. Just remind you that a Zoom, I mean the mute button, is found on the bottom left hand side of your computer or laptop screen or on the top right hand side of your iPad. Today I'm going to use a timer to manage our Zoom meeting. Please join us to get connected. And if you want to join us or have any problem, please let me know by an email and a phone number on the bottom of the screen. Second announcement I have today is uh, there will be online mass church led by Jen and Natalie, as I said earlier, for not only mass church families, but all worshippers together. So let us have a fun together online church today. Lastly, there were a few birthdays over the last couple of weeks. Bill, uh, Byung Tae Kong uh, on 20th and Natalie 27th and Robbie was yesterday. So happy birthday to Bill, Natalie and Robbie. If you had your birthday over the last couple of weeks but I missed yours, then happy birthday to all of you. Focus of this week is about what happened, where the Spirit of God is present among followers of Jesus Christ. As to illustrate the people on the day of Pentecost being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the tongues of fire, today I'm going to light the, not candle, but it is called the ethnal fire burner or something like that, to show you the flame of fire. So I'm going to light this burner. Well, 
eventually you will see this flame of fire as this online church is going on. Let us watch God by singing the first song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Welcome everybody to Online Church. It's so good to be here with all the Messy Church families because today we're going to be doing some Messy Church activities to celebrate Pentecost. So thank you Messy Church families for coming. First of all we're going to have Natalie who's going to show us our first craft activity. Okay, as we said I'm going to start with our first activity for today and we're going to make a dove using our hands and then after that, we, I'm going to show you step by step how to do it, okay? So, you get a white paper, you put your hand like this, and you take any pen, pencil, whatever you have at home, and you trace all around your hand, like I'm doing, like this. And then you have your hand shape. 
and then you start cutting it. Because we don't have time here online, I already prepared one and I cut it. This is how you have to have your hand shape, okay? Then what we're gonna do is, if you have one of these, you can just put it as a knife or with any black pen, you put the eye, then we want to make a peak. So we have to draw the peak. I already prepared also here my dove. After I finished it, I put the black dot for the eye, the yellow for the beak, and on my hand, because I had some feathers, I wanted to make it a little bit more fancy, so I glued some feathers. With feathers or without, this is your dove of the Holy Spirit. Hope you enjoy making it at home with your family. Well, Natalie, what a great job you did of making the dove. I hope everyone enjoyed that. The next thing we're going to make is something to do with the wind because when God sent the Holy Spirit, it came like a wind. And so we're going to make one of these, and I'm just going to hold it up, these whirly-twirly things. So you'll be able to hang it and the wind will blow it around. So I do believe that you've had this sent to your house. You might have printed it off already. I've cut one out already. And the first thing you have to do is with textures or crayons or colored pencils is to color it, color and make it really colorful like this one I've made. And then the next thing, you have to cut it out. Now it's really easy. You go where the start is, where the point is at the end. Can you see that, everyone? And you curve around. You're cutting out like a spiral. So you carefully cut around. Don't cut your fingers. Cut all the way around, a bit like a snail shell, but hopefully you don't cut snail shells. Off we go around till you get a nice curly, twirly shape. There we are. Get caught up with that one. And the next thing, we're going to make just a hole. I've got a hole punch you can just use use a, a pencil or a pen and make a hole in the middle of the part of your twirly thing. Then get a string, a piece of ribbon. I've tied a knot in the end of mine. And we're going to thread that through. You might need some help from mum or dad or a sister or brother. Poke it through the hole and pull it up. And there you are, there's my twirly. And what I did with mine that I made earlier, I just put two together. And then when the wind blows, you can hang them somewhere. And when the wind blows, that'll remind you of the wind that came when the Holy Spirit was sent by God. Cool. I hope you enjoy doing that one. Now, because the Holy Spirit came as a wind, it also came as fiery flames. So I thought the next thing we might like to do, we'll leave our twirlies there, is to make some flames. Now I'm just using a piece of black card and I've got some red and yellow paint and a plastic fork. You can use a metal fork if you like. It's good to use that side of the fork. And all I'm going to do is, turn it around so you can see, I'm going to splash some paint on, some yellow and some red and then I'm going to have some fun making some flame shapes. Can you see what I'm doing? You can do it creatively. Oh, try not to make a mess or I'll be in trouble. Mum will be sad. Dad will have to clean up. More yellow. And do you know what colour yellow and red make when they're mixed together? Oh, I think I heard someone say orange. Good job. Oh, and there's my flames. Oh. So you can remember that the dove is a sign of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came like a wind and it came like flames. Enjoy that. And then Natalie's going to come again in a moment and she'll show us 
our final thing, which is a food activity. And you know how you like food activities? Let's enjoy that now. And this is our final activity for today. So Jane and myself, we're going to make the last activity. So Jane, this is your banana. Mm, you take, yum, I hope you all like banana. We're going to take one banana, peel it, and we're going to use the middle part. So we don't throw the, throw the other parts, we eat it. But I want a shape that it's straight. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing later on. So this is the shape, like straight. I'm going to put it on the plate. I'm going to take one strawberry, cut it from down, take all the green. And then I'm going to cut on the side, both sides, this side, and this side. And we're going to put it on top of the banana. And what we've got, it's the candle of the Holy Spirit. Okay. This is the flame. And see how beautiful? And if you want to be more fancy, we want to put some of the icing. Oh, like the candle wax. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So you can be creative, do whatever you like. Wow. And this is your candle. And we can remember the flame. Yes. The Holy Spirit came as the flame. And then as a wee... Oh. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to eat mine. Oh, and then you can enjoy it and eat it. It's delicious. Yes. Well, Natalie, thanks for that. And thank you to all the Messy Church families who've joined us today. We hope you'll be able to try some of these crafts afterwards. Easy things. If you haven't got some of the things that we've shown you, just improvise. We'll have a great day and we look forward to when it's time to come back to Messy Church and we can see you in person. Now there's a very special video that's going to come on now and it tells more of the story about what happened on the day of Pentecost and you'll learn some more about the dove, the wind and the flame. See you soon. Bye. Hope you enjoyed today. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed, what can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen, listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.
Today we have gathered to worship and to celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday is the third most important Sunday of the Christian year. On Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and the entrance of the Son of God into the midst of humanity. On Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus has risen from the dead, which means you know, uh, God promises us eternal life, the life in God. And on Pentecost, we celebrate the birthday of the church. It is the day the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, entered into the life of every believer. Before this day, God's Holy Spirit was only present to God's chosen. But from Pentecost on, the Spirit of God is with all believers and empowering all who believe and all who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. Today, the Christian church needs a rebirth of the Spirit where souls are on fire with the love of Christ, where barriers are broken down and superficial divisions are breached through a unity of the Spirit. Today, more than ever, the church needs to recall the fires of Pentecost so that souls can break free, break, break free from bondage and healing. And the full power of God's anointing can be experienced in every gathering of people. Pentecost was a big spring festival in Jerusalem that day. It is a Jewish celebration to remember their liberation by God from slavery in Egypt and their freedom under the leadership of Moses. As people do at community festivals, everyone was having a good time, connecting with old friends, exchanging old stories, maybe even attending a community worship service or two. Everybody was happy except for a group of 120 followers of Jesus, including the 12 who were isolated in an upper room, scared out of their understandings, searching for perspective on the strange things that had happened to them in the last few weeks. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon them and those scared disciples were empowered to change the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. That is history. There are a few things we may discover and experience from today's text as a result of the Spirit being present with us and filling us. Let us see today's text, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, Jesus' apostles and followers were all together in one place, waiting for the gift his Father promised. So first, where the Spirit of God is present, there is gathering of people. There is a gathering of the community. They were together. Maybe with the fear of persecution by the Roman Empire because Jesus was executed as a political uh, prisoner. Maybe with the fear of separation from the Jewish community because teachings of Jesus differed from Judaism and the Jewish laws. But in John 15, 26, Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit came upon those followers of Jesus Christ. I was wondering, what happened if they didn't follow Jesus' command to wait for the Spirit? I was wondering what happened if they were caught up with the fear of persecution, separation, or fear of being treated as a fanatics, and then didn't gather in the same room. I was wondering what happened if they didn't stay together because of different culture and different languages. I was wondering what, it, what happened if the Holy Spirit came upon only individuals, not a group of people. I was wondering what happened if they didn't start to form a community of faith. However, 120 Jesus followers were together, as Jesus had told, and waiting for the Holy Spirit, paraclete, 
that Jesus had promised. When they received the Holy Spirit, they became the motive of a faith community, as we found in um, Acts 2. The world is hungering for community. When it is tough, hard, when a crisis hits, when you are afraid and scared, you don't want to be by yourself. You call your friends, you call your family, you get together at church and you light a candle. You want to be with other people because it is important in the critical moments of our lives that we belong to one another. We Christians may be wondering if the church was succeeded, it's responsibility to meet people at their point of need. After Pentecost, followers of Jesus had a passion for seeking and saving the lost. See verse 14. Peter shared his experience of encountering with the Holy Spirit with the people in the community. What happened to those who were in the upper room? Where the Spirit of God is, there is communication. See verse 2. Suddenly they hear a noise like great whooshing wind that filled the house. Then they saw what looked like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, but didn't burn them. When the Spirit of God had come and was filling each one of them, all the women and men and children, they all began to celebrate and praise God in lots of different languages that they had never learned. See the screen. It shows countries of people mentioned at Pentecost. They were amazed because they heard the apostles from Galilee declare the wonders of God in their native languages, not the gift of spirit, not the gift of the tongues, which is glossolalia, happened in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 14. What is happening here is a gift of understanding. So that the people from all those places, 16 reasons all together, suddenly could understand one another. They could communicate even though they came from different countries, different ethnic backgrounds, different situations in life. Suddenly, here on the day of Pentecost, they could understand. What about us? How can you understand and be understood each other? We could understand and be understood by the help and spiritual guide of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit teaches us to remember Jesus Christ, what he has done for us. To learn the scriptures, to love God, to live holy lives and walk by faith. What is the driving force of the church today? It is the Holy Spirit who helps us speak a language that can be understood and gives listeners ears that can hear. If the Holy Spirit um, lose control of people, the world would know. If the Holy Spirit got hold of this church, God knows what might happen. It is not the latest tactic, it is not the latest idea, it is the power of God through the Holy Spirit that moves people to believe. What we can find from the Acts 2 is that where the Spirit of God is present, there are transforma transformations. See verses from 36. It is an amazing story we have here. When the Holy Spirit was filling Peter, he became a confident witness of Jesus Christ preached about whom Jesus was, what he did for them. And as a result of his preaching, there were 3,000 converts. Peter didn't have a sanctuary. There was no PA system that I have, you know, this excellent wireless microphone. There was no band playing in the background and no singers leading singings. And 
Peter was talking about young men seeing visions and old men dreaming dreams and the need for all of us to repent and believe the gospel. That is what is important in life. That is what is really important. The ultimate goal of the church is not to adopt the same value system as this postmodern world. Not to provide more customer service, but to be in passion for seeking and saving the lost. I have a question for you today. The question is this. Who is going to look for and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for the lost? The church at Pentecost was the creation of God, not by man. The church at Pentecost was a community that communicated the good news of Jesus Christ to all people. And the church at Pentecost was a community of transformation, of great faith, a center of hope and healing, a center of real life and great love. Are you willing to communicate the good news of Jesus Christ to people in the community? Are you willing to love, care, and transform the communities through Jesus Christ? Today, I want to invite you to pray for the gift of God's Holy Spirit being filled in you. Let it fill you and lift you and send your hearts on fire for God. Amen. Today we celebrate the coming of God's Holy Spirit to his followers at Pentecost. Let us pray together. We ask you, God, to continue your work in the world, in our nation, Australia, and in all people, young and old. Dear Holy Spirit, please help each of us to recognise that God is with us, both in good times and bad. Even in droughts, in bushfires, in floods, and in the midst of COVID-19. Please forgive us for the times when we assume your love has left us. Thank you for the many blessings that we personally have received during this past week. Please help us to share your love with our families and friends as we and those that we meet along the way. Holy Spirit, we especially ask that you help our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, our State Premiers and local government authorities. Please guide all administrators, teachers, service people and medical staff during this difficult time. Give them your wisdom, insight and grace to do the best for people, the people that they are serving. We pray for our Minister Ilong, our family worker Natalie and the other leaders of our church. Please bless all people who are watching this online service, especially the Messy Church families that have joined with us. We think of those people that we know who are, doing, are going through particularly difficult times at the moment, for the sick, those recovering from illness, the lonely, people who have lost their jobs and all who are fearful about their future. Holy Spirit, you know us. Help us to recognise your presence in the midst of our circumstances. We offer you our broken lives and ask that you continue to work in us and through us. You are always for us even though our journey may not have been our first choice, you continue to walk with us. May we overflow with the Holy Spirit and be beacons of light, love and forgiveness to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. The experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost resulted in the disciples praising God in various languages. I invite you to join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Today we are using the Good News Translation. 
The words will appear on the screen shortly. Please pray in the language you are most familiar with. This is an end, the end of today's online church. If you are willing to get connected with us or simply having any question or inquiry, please contact me via email and or phone on the bottom of the screen. Now, as we conclude the service, we may do Mass Church Blessing or Mass Church Grace, it is called. It, it, it goes like this. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So hold out your hands as if expecting a present. And the love of God, put your hands on your, on your heart, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Normally we would hold hands together, but now, like in the reach out your hands, or like in the holding hands of others virtually, then, Amen. Raise your hands up to the sky. Okay, let us do that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. I hope you enjoy this service. 
And thank you for all those people who took part of this online church, seen and unseen. Thank you. I hope you may have a very blessed day and week. See you next week. I got no word.